Here we go. How's it going YouTube and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam and in today's video I'm going to show you well my way of how I made a seamless loop. You might be asking what is a seamless loop? Well a seamless loop is similar to a time lapse but realistically it's instead of it being a full sequence from one to two, it's just a constant one to one. So you might be asking, what do you mean about that? So a seamless loop is in its name. It's just a loop of photos slash videos over a certain period of time. I'll put up a example on the screen as I'm talking. There's multiple ways you can do this, um, but the, the one I'm gonna be talking about today is going to be the one where you set up a accelerometer. We might, uh, accelerometers are mostly on a lot of modern day cameras. Um, my camera, the Sony a7 III has one. I set up a 30 minute one, so it took one photo every 10 seconds for 30 minutes. So I think it was a total of 200 photos. I would suggest wouldn't I wouldn't do anything less um, when it comes to that because it will probably you probably won't see it being as seamless as a seamless loop anything longer is probably perfect because the longer probably the better and as well seamless loops in my opinion if you're on the go and walking around it's a lot easier to get a seamless loop than it is probably a time lapse because it takes up less storage on your SD well let's say you've already done your seamless loop you're out being out the field you took your photos you did let's say a 30 minute one I'm gonna use my 30 minutes I did at the waterfront as an example so next you want to bring that up into Adobe Premiere Pro. You want to put that all into its own file. You can do when you're importing photos to Adobe to make them all into a video as a time lapse. It kind of helps you out here. When you're importing the photos, your sequence to Adobe, what you want to do is come down to your project file. You want to click import and then click on the first file. And you want to make sure that image sequence is ticked because Adobe itself will find all the numbers and put them all frame by frame. So for this one, there's 199, but I'm just going to say there's 200 to be exact. I'm going to click on image sequence and I'm going to import them. It might take a little while for your computer to do it the first time, but just let us do its thing. So once, once that's done, you want to drag that into Adobe itself, into your timeline. And then from there, what you want to do is you want to find where you want to start this. For this image sequence, I do not want the beginning of uh, the first let's say the first second, because I don't like how the clouds lock for like half a second. So I want to go in probably about a second deep. I want to cut, then I want to go another, go to the back of it, and you want to do the same of whatever you're doing to the back. So I want to go a second, it's eight seconds long, so I'm going to seven seconds. I'm going to cut that, I'm going to delete both of them. Now this sequence that I have here is now only six seconds long, so I'm going to go halfway in, so I'm going to go to three seconds. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to drag that to the back. So now the first, another tip to do this, I like to render in and out the video because it's better for your computer just to play back if you haven't got the beefiest computer. So it's easier for your computer to play back the sequence on loop for you. So the reason why we cut it in half and move the other half to the back is so that it starts the first, the last frame starts halfway through, if that makes any sense. So the first frame is halfway through the last, last bit. So as you can see here with the video, as it plays through, you'll see it jump. And then the last frame, if you have it on loop, as it goes through, the middle bit will jump back to the beginning. And then the last frame here starts at the first, the last frame continues on with the first frame. So the beginning and end are good. They work together. We need to fix the middle. So how do we make it a seamless loop? Well, to do that, you can just type in cross. You'll find cross dissolve right here under video effects and dissolve video transitions. You want to drag that right into the middle. So after you drag your cross dissolve over onto the middle of your th onto the middle of your loop you might find that it's not as seamless as you want it to be and that's pretty much an easy fix so what you can do is just grab on the cross dissolve and drag it out normally depending on how far you drag it normally depending on how far you drag your cross dissolve along both of your clips is how seamless it will make it but sometimes it takes the essence out of the seamless loop itself so with this i've dragged it out to the max it can go and it looks a lot more seamless than it did before Okay, now let's try uh, another seamless loop, but we'll try one that's going sort of a little time lapse from night, well, dawn to night time. So with this one, 
it goes from dusk to night time. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the last one. I'm going to take one second of the front and the end of the clip. So oh, cut one second off the front and the end. So it goes from a 16 second clip to a 16 second clip to a 14 second clip. I'm going to bring that up to the forward. And I'm going to go to the middle of it, which is seven seconds. And I'm going to swap the beginning with the end. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go Going to go into my effects, video transitions, dissolve, and cross dissolve. Or you could just type up cross like I normally do because I'm lazy and just put that there. With this, I'm going to render in and out because I like having a smooth transition and I don't really have a beefy computer when it comes to um, video editing so it can't just press play. Um, so I like having everything pre-rendered. Um, I'm not the best with Adobe. I probably couldn't recommend that, but if you're having trouble watching it on playback, I would try render in and out the sequence. Um, so to do that, you just click at the start of the video, press I, and then at the back of the video, press zero, uh, O. So then you go into sequence, and then you go to render in and out. Your computer will take a little bit. It will render this sequence here on your playback that you have selected with your in and out tool. And then from there, you'll see a green bar above that indicates that it's fully rendered. So with this one, let's see if it transitions properly. So it goes back and forth. So with this one, I like, I actually really love it, but I don't like how it, if you see there in the middle when it transitions over, it spikes up in light. So what I'm just going to do is do what I did before and just drag out the sequence. I'm going to re-render re it because I want to see it with smooth and this is for YouTube. So I'm just going to re-render it in and out to make it easier. Let it do its thing. Seamless loops are really cool. I like them. I'm probably going to use them for like my outros to my videos. Um, I've seen them on Instagram and I find they're dope. And then now I just need to find out how to make a six second or 14 second on this one clip on how to do like, I don't know, continuous audio. That might be next video. Well, anyway, thank you if you've made it this far and you've watched it. Um, this is sort of my tutorial on how I made a seamless loop. It's pretty easy um, and I'm probably going to make tutorials on you can say videos or things I find that are pretty cool that I'm learning. So it sort of tests my like knowledge of learning it. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.